so we finally got our trailer hitch for this truck. It took us forever. We had to call so many different people to get information on this. It's ridiculous. The guy that sold it, the truck to us, didn't know anything about it, no information, wasn't helpful. He shot us to another person, that person wasn't helpful. And we tried to order it from Ford. They wanted 900 bucks just for this. I was like, I'm not paying $900 for that. And after a bunch of struggling and going back and forth, Christina finally found this online for $350, $360, something like that. So, and that's free shipping. And if it didn't fit right, they said just ship it back. We'll send you a label. So, that's awesome. And this is the second hitch that we're trying. The first one was for a regular F-350 that the guy ordered for us wrong. And, uh, yeah, it wasn't even close. So, we measured everything, and it should be right. So, we're going to try it out. All I gotta say, this gas tank is what makes everything so difficult. The way they mold it, the gas tank, it goes under the frame, so the gas tank comes from the bottom. Stupid design, and if you ask me, I would have left enough room to bolt the accessories up to it. But what we did is we started with the, the one in the front over here. What it has is these carriage bolts with these squares, and it goes into the receiver hitch to where it holds itself. But to get that joker up there, especially on this one right here, I don't know if you can see it. Let me get a light. So you see that bolt right here, the silver one? It's not a grade eight bolt like they recommend. And it's also not the same size. But like I said, that gas tank, I'm not dropping that whole gas tank just to get this one bolt in there. It's all overbuilt anyway. It's overkill. Christina begs to differ, but... We'll discuss that later. If it ever fails, you can blame me. <laughs> but uh, we also have the way it works right here. Is because I moved the lights back. They were right here, the lights. This interferes with that. So we had to remove the light bracket, put this back, and then we're gonna put the light bracket back on. Anyway, that's where we're at so far. So the last receiver hitch that we got was wrong. It was probably about this wide, and this thing was all the way up in here. Like, we, the gas tank was just all in the way. And I should have known when they said, just drop the spare tire in, in the instructions temporarily to put your receiver hitch on it. That should have been a red flag right there. But you see all this room, that's how it's supposed to be. So another thing we got was this plug. It's just a wiring harness adapter to where you don't have to cut your factory plugs. And I don't have them with me, but when you're, when you're looking, it's, these things are really hard to unplug. But when you're looking for your, the, what plug you need, don't be uh, mistaken by looking at it because they have these little caps that go on it and you can't really tell what the plug's supposed to look like. You have to take those caps off in order to find out which plug goes in which. We're gonna put a link in the description of the video to show this part number. We got it from Kurt, same people we got the receiver hitch from. This is the name brand, we didn't get it from Kurt. We got it from Car ID and uh, dot com, or is it just Car ID? I'll put the link in the description. Okay, so we paid like 360 for this shipped. That was tax and everything, huh? Yeah. 
couldn't be done. Then we got this wiring harness, which was like 20 bucks, another 20 to ship it, and this thing's real hard to unplug too. Once it, it plugs, it plugs in good. I'm actually gonna get, this is how the, this piece came. It came with this, the harness, but I'm gonna unplug this and get the one that has the four pin connector and the round connector here because I wanna be able to use both of them. And that just bolts to the back of your bed that you're gonna build or whatever. But yeah, that way, I mean. Who wants to cut a brand new truck? Yeah, I mean, I went to the professionals. You'd think they'd, they'd be able to look this up. Christina found it after searching online. And you know, no problems. This makes things a whole lot easier. I don't know why they don't stock it. These people that put these beds on these trucks, all they gotta do is plug it up instead of cutting all these wires. Just to hardwire this in. Yes, we finally got it installed. The instruction says it takes about 40 minutes for a novice to put it together and a 20 if you're a professional. It definitely took every bit of 40 minutes for us. So this hitch came from Car ID. Uh, don't try to look it up on the Kurtz website. Uh, you're not gonna be able to locate the right port if you have a chassis cab. Apparently a chassis cab receiver hitch is, uh, you, it's impossible to find them, according to everybody, but Christina found it on, online. All right, so I got the tape measure measured out. Ideally, I'm gonna need a minimum of 12 foot of uh, flat surface on the bed uh, to hold the two molars that I wanna put on, that, which would be one zero turn and one standard or two standards. But up to here is about 10 foot, and that's probably where I'm gonna stop the bed more than likely. Uh, it'll, it'll be just like a regular flatbed, squared off, going down and over, probably some toolboxes. But from the flat part, I'm gonna have a dovetail that goes down, uh, probably two to three feet, depending on what I need. And the way the mowing go system works, it's supposed to go into the receiver hitch. So, I'm gonna see if I can use this. That way I can still pull a trailer and keep my ramp system going. It may or may not work. I won't know until I really get into it, but one step closer. All right, so this is what it's gonna look like for the time being until I get started on the bed. At least I can pull a trailer if I need to. And I just have this part tie wrapped on for now to plug my seven way up.